Hit me. One more time. John chapter 4, we're going down to. I'm going to read the message Bible. I'll read a couple verses for you. Starting at verse 10. Of course, your, your translation that you're following may be reading something different, a little different. But John chapter 4, verses 10 says, Jesus answered, if you knew the generosity of the God of God and who I am, you would ask me for a drink, and I would give you fresh living water. The woman said, sir, you don't even have a bucket to draw with, and this well is deep. So how are you going to get this living water? Are you better than our ancestor Jacob, who dug this well and drank from it? He and his sons and livestock, and it passed it down to us. Jesus said, everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again and again. Anyone who drinks the water I give will never thirst, not ever. The water I give will be an artist in spring within, gushing fountains of endless life. The woman said, sir, give me this water so I won't ever get thirsty. Won't ever have to come back to this well again. Yeah. Let's pray, God, we thank you for another opportunity to share with Zion Hill, God. We ask that you continue now to bless us as we hear the fresh perspectives that you already spoke to me in private, that somebody might be mindful that we can give all to you. God, it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. For those of you who are already taking notes, you in your bulletin, you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, however you record the service on and online, however it is, it's simply what you're drinking. What you're drinking. And and I, I want y'all to understand this W A W H A T C H A. What you drinking. What you drinking. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Brittany, I want you to know, first off, happy birthday again, uh, but everybody likes a good drink. Uh, it doesn't matter how old you are, Mason likes a good drink. If you're saved or not, if you're a boy or a girl, man or woman, a good drink will have you feeling nice. No pun intended. Now, depending on what your preference of drinking is, some of you right now are thinking about water. Some of you may be thinking about milk and Kool-Aid. And still, some of you are thinking about your favorite adult beverage. And it really doesn't matter what your favorite drink is when you're able to put your lips on a cup of your favorite drink. In most cases, you get excited. The problem can be that too much of anything can become a problem for your health That's right. and your family and even your future. Mm -hmm. And now more than ever before, it is becoming more important to know what you drink, how much you drink, and drink and what it is that you're drinking. Mm -hmm. um, by now, most of us have heard about the Flint, Michigan water crisis. Isn't it still a shame that some people are looking to save money or to show they have a brilliant mind will resort to using polluted water to supply water to an entire city. Can you imagine being able to turn, not being able to turn on the faucet to shower in clean water? Can you imagine not being able to go get your morning cup of fresh coffee because you have to use bottles of water? Can you imagine not being able to cook like you want to or wash clothes like you need to or bathe your children like you need to or just have a cup of ice cold water only unless you have a bottle of water? Uh, and it, as horrible as it may seem, or as horrible the news portrays the stories, the reality is, for some people who are already struggling to have their bare essentials met, now life is now worse because I can't even have a drink of water out of the water hose. Mm, some of y'all can't even have a drink out of, they can't even have a drink out of their water hose. Y'all remember doing that in the summertime, uh, going to the faucet at the water hose to take a drink. But I suggest to you this morning, although we are trying to do a small part to help the families uh, with some fresh water and fresh drinking water, there will come a time soon after we deliver all this water that everyone will thirst again. Yes, yes. Yeah, delivering the bottle of water really isn't going to fix the problem. That's right. uh, uh, unlimited milk or Kool-Aid won't fix the problem. Just packing their bags and moving won't fix the problem. And the, really, the only way to fix the problem is to fix the problem. Yeah, yeah. Get fresh water. Create jobs to replace the lead pipes. 
get natural resources and purify the water before it comes into the house, putting water filtration on every faucet, and even with all the repairs in place, the new water filtration in place, the new jobs created, somebody will still be thirsty. That's right. Yeah, they will still crave a fresh glass of water yeah. and a cup of red juice or even their favorite adult beverage. Uh -huh. Dehydration is our body's natural response for not having something to drink. Y'all, right. right. and I, although I know I'm guilty of not drinking enough water daily, we should all realize that drinking water is essential for us to have a healthy life. That's right. Yeah, and although we can drink water today and be thirsty tomorrow, does not make you a bad person. Yeah, it simply means your body needs some water to rehydrate itself and to function properly. Yeah. Uh, the same can be said of our spiritual journey. Yeah. Just like we need fresh physical water, H2O, two hydrogen parts yeah. and one part oxygen, our yeah. spirit needs fresh living water. That's yeah, right. for many of us, we found that our relationship in Jesus Christ is essential, is essential to our living. And y'all, we should realize that daily we need a fresh refreshing of his living water inside of us. Yeah, we can't let a day go by without praising the Lord. We can't let a day pass by without singing a song. We can't let a day go by without praying our prayer. We can't let a day go by without telling him how much we love him. We can't let a day go by without telling him how much we appreciate him. We can't let a day go by when we don't glorify his presence in our life. We can't let a day click by without realizing because of who he is, we are who we are. And because of him, we still have life, health, yeah. and strength. Because of him, we yeah. still stand. Yeah. And because of him, we still have joy and hope. And because of him, our souls have eternal peace yeah. in a dying world. Uh -huh. Somebody say because of him. Because yeah. Of him. yeah, yeah, here it is this morning. This morning, yeah. we look at our text and we witness, again, Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman at the well. Y'all, if y'all didn't realize, she identified Jesus as a Jew. She recognizes he doesn't have a bucket to get water. Then she questions if he is greater than Jacob and his family who drink from the well. Well, I can imagine her in her mind saying, because she didn't write it in her text, how this man will give me some water? <laughs> he can't quench my thirst. Uh, well, let me pause right there and spend 30 seconds on this issue. Ladies and gentlemen, every man you meet, it's not supposed to supply your needs or fulfill all your wants. Every man doesn't deserve to be in your personal space. Every woman don't deserve to be in your personal space. And if we allow just any man or any woman to enter our space, you will soon find out that these people are predators seeking to take advantage of you. They're going to get over on us. They're going to use us until they're through with us and with us. And then they're going to add us to their list and knock to their belt and they're going to move on. Let's go back to our text, y'all. I ain't even going to stay there long. I told you the third text. Uh, this woman realizes the Jewish man, the Jewish man, this Jewish man should not be willing to associate with her because of who she is uh -huh. and because of who he is. Right. She probably disqualified herself. But how many of you all know that Jesus doesn't disqualify us? Yeah. Brittany, he really is the only one that qualifies us. Yeah, yeah he is the only one. He, we, we can disqualify ourselves. Uh, Reverend, we can feel that we aren't worthy, but his blood, his blood has the same power to save Jews and Gentiles, Samaritans and Christians, blacks, whites, Asians, Europeans, Hispanic, green, yellow, red, or blue. His blood has the same saving grace for all. It doesn't matter if you're dressed in a suit and tie or you're sitting on the steps across the street in jeans and a t-shirt. If you call on the name of Jesus to be saved by his blood, he will cover you from the penalty of all Hallelujah. your sin. Hallelujah. Well, here it is now. We arrive in verse 13, which is where I wanted to be in the first place. Verse 13 of chapter 4. And Jesus replies to the woman. Jesus said, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty. Again, y'all simply is what you're drinking. Mom, the first thing I want you to consider before you, before your next drink is be careful of what you drink. Be careful of what you drink. Be careful of what you drink. Uh, water is necessary for living. Juice is good. Soda is good. Wine is good. But all of them will, no matter what you drink, will eventually want you, you will want something else to drink. Yeah. We should realize some people sin because it feels good. Yeah. Yeah. We we have a desire that needs to be fulfilled. Yeah. 
We have a thirst for something that can only be satisfied by fulfilling our sinful nature we enjoy. Y'all, right. here it is. We simply seek it. Yeah, yeah some of us crave it. And some of sometimes we got to get it and by any means necessary. Right. That means for the thirst, we will, we will neglect what we have in order to fulfill a to temporary purpose. Yeah. Brother, it's so good to see you. Maybe I'm the only person yeah. in here who haven't yeah. felt like yeah. I have to have an item. I saw it in the store. It was calling my name. Yeah. Knowing I didn't need it. Knowing I already had three of them just like it. But the deal was so good. I just had to buy it. Yeah. Plus, I had a coupon. So I had to buy it. Only to realize three months have gone past and I never used it. It's still sitting in the corner. Matter of fact, it's sitting on the deck right now. But I had to have, I realized I wasted some money. But it called my name. But it called my name. And I, and I know I had to go. Y'all got some stories too. Some of y'all can't let go past Marshall without stopping in the store. Some of y'all can't go past TJ Maxx without stopping in the store. Some of y'all can't pass the liquor store Woo! without stopping in the store. Well, I'm not in here by myself because all of us have this thirst. All of us have this thirst from the pulpit to the door. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was trying to quench a sinful thirst that I convinced myself I needed, and long before I was thirsty again. Yeah, I'm not over there. I'm listening. I don't even want you to turn your neighbor. I don't even want you to turn to your neighbor, but some of you understand trying to satisfy a desire that you knew was a sin, but your mind told you you had to have it, you had to do it, and you decided to go get it. And long, long after, after you satisfied that sin, another sin was right around the corner, waving his hand, waving her hand, sitting in the window, in the next red cup, in the next carton, and in or in the moment you thought you satisfied your thirst. Preach. Yeah. Preach. Yes, Maybe some yes, of y'all won't yes, be honest with me, but please be honest with Jesus and let him know, yes, I have been thirsty. Yes, I drank from sinful wells. Yes, it tasted good. Yes, it felt good. Yes, I really don't want to thirst anymore. Yes, I love you. Yes, I serve you. But sometimes I still get thirsty for things I know I shouldn't do. I still have moments when I thirst for things I shouldn't want. Yes, there are times when I fall into my sinful thirst. Yes. Over your godly presence. Mm. 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 Yeah. That's, That's why we have to be careful what we drink. Yeah. Because the drinks pulls us in. Well. If we're thirsty for more things of the flesh than we are of the spirit, yeah. then we're thirsty for the sinful desires that would never be full. Yeah. But if we're thirsty for the living water, then we can always have our thirst filled. Yes, that's why we gather every Sunday. Yes, it's good to see family and friends, but to come together and refill of his living water. Because when I come to church, and you come to church, and we can praise him in spirit from what we've been through all last week, and the spirit stops flowing in our midst, and our hearts get filled with praise, and our minds are erased from the frustration, and we are equipped for two to fight on. Our thirst for sin is decreased. Yeah, that's right. And our thirst for his goodness increases. Yeah, and when he begins right. to pour his spirit in us, then our sins are washed away. Yeah. And we're going to be filled with love. Remember, we're going to be filled with joy. Yeah. Remember, we're filled with hope and patience. Yeah. We're filled with assurance. How do I know? Because things of God can't dwell in things not filled by God. Right. Yeah, yeah. Be careful of what you drink because some of us, for some of the filled with sin that you escaped when you got saved. Well, yes. I'm going to say that again. Be careful what you drink because some of it is filled with the sin you escaped when you got saved. Wow. Yeah. Some of it is filled with the depression you survived. Yeah. Some of it is filled with the hate you forgave. Yeah. Be careful of what you drink because the devil knows exactly what you like. The enemy knows exactly what will set you off. He knows exactly what pushes all your buttons. And if you are sure it's a drink from God, measure it against Jesus. His water is loving. Yeah. His water is forgiving. Yeah. His water is restoring. His yeah. water is reconnecting. His water repairs dysfunctional relationships. His re water is reclaiming shattered visions, yeah. rejuvenating distracted destinies. His water is purifying. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah, it's purifying our souls. Preach. Preach. All we have to do is be a yeah. vessel yeah. willing to be filled yeah. by the Lord. Yeah. Uh, watch your drink. Mm, yeah. The second point I discovered in this text, Ron, is his water will produce evidence. Mm. 
Ms. Water will produce evidence. Elder, everybody over the last three days yeah. is talking about the evidence, how, how awesome a musician named Prince Rogers Nelson was. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. uh, on the entertainment news programs, on every news channel, on every radio station, mm -hmm. there has been a story yes. about his life and his death yeah. of this musical genius. Yeah. I believe we all would be hard pressed to find any adult anywhere in the world that has not heard a song by this incredible artist. Y'all, yeah. right. right. they might be like me and I don't know all the words to the songs, mm -hmm. but most of us can name at least one or two songs that he wrote during his recording career. That's right. And if you're a real fan of Prince, mm -hmm. you could quote possibly or name at least 10 songs That's right. or more songs and sing at least all the lyrics to at least three. That's right. Yeah, well this gentleman had evidence of being a musician. Mm -hmm. He had evidence of being a superstar recorder. Right. He had evidence of being an incredible performer. And although he lived a very private life, he had evidence of being a believer in Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah. That's Listen, right. I, I found some things. I had to share some things with me last night on our way up the road. According to this article by QPolitical.com, an article that was just written two days ago. Mm -hmm. Did you know the music legend had a devout Christian upbringing? That's right. Mm -hmm. And eventually used his personal experience with Christ and his celebrity platform to speak to those refusing to surrender to Jesus. Mm -hmm. wow. Did you know Prince heard a song called What If about the transforming love of Jesus on Christian radio? Right. He re-recorded the song and gave it a much wider audience than the original composer, mm -hmm. says the composer herself, Nicole Norton. Uh, did you know Prince was, not, was more than just an icon, more than just a sex symbol? He was a leader, and he led a lot of people to Christ through his music. Wow. Prince had evidence of his relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. Just like our text, if we drink the living water of Jesus Christ, we should also have evidence. Right. Yeah, yeah. Thanks be to God, I'm not the judge of your evidence, mm -hmm. and you're not the judge of my evidence. But if we're serious about our relationship with Christ, nobody should be judging us by what we don't do. Mm -hmm. right. They should be witnesses of what we do. Y'all, yeah. nobody should be judging you by what you don't do. Yeah. We should be witnesses of what you do do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Evidence of his living water is proof that we're not just talking about serving Christ, mm -hmm. but we're serving and working for Christ. That's yeah, right. I, I, right. I know, I, y'all, I know, I know the text says we will never thirst again. Mm -hmm. It does say that, it does say this out. We will never thirst again, but I believe not being thirsty is a process mm -hmm. that transforms us into a stronger and healthier relationship with Christ. Yeah, yeah well, having evidence of living water is a process, and we all got work to do. Yeah. Every day we all should be in the process of having more evidence of living water deposited within us. Everybody got work to do. Everybody has room for more evidence. But I see the problem. But I see the problem. Y'all yeah. know what the problem is some church folk think. Hmm. Church if folk. you are living perfectly, wow. and if you don't know every scripture by memory, hmm. and if you still got some sin in your life, hmm. and if you can't put the bottle down, wow. and if you can't stop cursing, and if you can't stop lying, if you can't stop hanging with old, all them ladies, all them men, if you can't stop smiling at every man you see, if you can't church control folk. your anger, and if you can't give more than a dollar, Teach. Uh -huh. church folk. you don't have any evidence. Yeah, church folk. Right now. But our lack of evidence is not an excuse or justification for us to give up for living on Christ, for yeah. Christ. Right. Yeah, just because you still smoke. Right. doesn't mean you aren't ever going to have any evidence. That's right. Just because you still fornicate doesn't mean you don't have evidence. Just because you lie or you cheat or you drink or you gamble or you curse a lot of it doesn't mean you don't have any evidence of Christ. Why? Because now you're in the process of gathering your evidence. That's right. That's y'all right. remember just a few yeah. moments ago, yeah. somebody, well, some of y'all could have cut, gave somebody a piece of your mind. Mm. Just a few hours ago, yeah. you was going to let it all hang out. Just a few days ago, you were crying yourself to sleep. Just a few short weeks ago, you could have smoked two packs a day. Just a, a month ago, if I looked at you wrong, you'd have cursed me out. Just a few years ago, you would have drank like a fish and been drunk like a skunk. Just a few days ago, you would have shut the party down. And actually, the party didn't stop until you got there. And it's not over until you leave. Yeah, you got evidence. I might still curse, but I, was, I did curse someone out yesterday. Preach. Keep it real. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got evidence. You got evidence. You didn't buy. You bought some tickets yesterday, but you didn't buy all twenty. Matter of fact, you put ten extra dollars in the bar off today because you decided I'm going to sell a little bit more. You got some evidence. Yeah, but I declare, if you have, you're giving your life to Christ and you're working to discover your destiny. If you're pursuing your purpose, you got some evidence. If you serve in ministry, if you love more than you did yesterday, if you forgive people who hurt you, if you can look at your baby daddy and not curse him out, you got some evidence. If you can talk to your baby mama with some respect, you got some evidence. If you can see your ex walking down the street and wish them the best instead of wanting to get them hit by a bus, you got some evidence. Yeah, yeah. If you can have one drink instead of two drinks, you got some evidence. If you can help someone that you would normally overlook, you got some evidence. If you can care for someone who don't care nothing about you, you got some evidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Preach, Pastor. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That's all right? Evidence of living water. Process. It's a process. That's right. Evidence of living water is in what you're drinking. Yeah. Every time you should shout, every time you shout hallelujah, that's evidence. Ooh. Every time you give God praise, that's yeah. evidence. Yeah. Every time you pray for your neighbor, that's evidence. Yeah. Every time you turn your tragedy into testimony, that's some evidence. Every time you didn't give up on your purpose, you didn't, you glad to serve in the business. Every time you uh, encourage somebody who is frustrated or heartbroken, you got some evidence. My question is, do you have evidence yeah. of living water? Yeah. yeah, my last, my last, my last brief point from this text and what you're drinking is there will be some benefits in the water. There's some benefits in the water. John 14 says, but those who drink of this water will give, will I give them will never be thirsty. The water where I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Yeah. Uh, by now, if you know me for more than a day, mm -hmm. you know I got two little amazing little dudes in my life. Yeah, yeah. At any moment, if you don't know, I don't even know where it's at. I pull my, if you don't know who they are, yeah. or don't know what they look like, mm -hmm. I'll pull myself on them. Yeah, she will. Anywhere. Anywhere inside. Yeah. And show you their picture. Uh huh. Because they my grandsons. They my grandsons. They my little boys. They my boys. They the boys that I've been praying for. They're the boys I needed in my house to help me balance out the house. You know, they my boys. They took over the house, though. They my boys, though. They taking over the house, but they my boys. Uh, but most nights, most nights, most nights, when they stay up watching, stay up late, and they watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Paw Patrol or Octonauts or Mickey Mouse Club, they come and get me to take them downstairs mm -hmm. because they want something to drink. And it doesn't matter that I'm fast asleep yeah. and their mother is in their room mm -hmm. on her phone, mm -hmm. on Facebook, texting somebody, and I'm trying to get some sleep because I need to get up in the morning. If they're thirsty in the middle of the night, you can almost guarantee they will come in my room, Dickness, climb on the bed or walk up next to me and tap on me while calling my name to get them something to drink. Y'all, yeah. sometimes, some nights, some nights I'm, I'm prepared because I normally have a glass of water or some juice next to my bed. Yeah. And when either of them comes in the room, they will drink whatever is in my cup and be satisfied. But on those nights when I have drank my water and they still are thirsty, they still want me to get up and get them something to drink. Mm -hmm. And for them, no from Papa is not an option. Yeah. They know if they call my name, they know if they call my name, they tap on me or ask me long enough, I will get up and make sure they get their drink. And once we get downstairs to the kitchen and I get them a cup and I get them something to drink, then they happily take their cups back upstairs and go back to watching TV. But y'all, here it is. On a few occasions, instead of going back in their room to watch TV, they go back upstairs, drink their water, and lay in my spot in the bed. And when I get upstairs and I see them in my spot, they look at me and say, Papa, come lay down with me. Blows my mind, blows my mind because now, 
They get their water. They got their benefits. And now they're ready for their rest. All I'm trying to say to you is, you get the living water in you. The benefits of the living water working in you. The benefits of the living water working through you. And before long, the benefits of the water has transformed you yeah. and now prepared you for your eternal rest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All of the process of living water working in you, working through you, was preparing you and transforming you to be ready for eternal life. Yeah. 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 Although eternal life is our ultimate benefit uh, of living as a Christian, I believe we can have the benefits of Christ living in us while we live on earth. And all we have to do is drink the water that Jesus is giving. Yo, we got to study his word. That means we got to surrender to his word. We have to apply his word to our life. And we have to do his word. His word gives us all the tools we need to allow the water, the ability to flow in our lives. Yo, every area of our life where the living water reaches get benefits of Jesus Christ. Yeah. If he touches your hearts, you get benefits of love and hope. If he touches your mind, you get benefits of wisdom and patience. If he touches your hand, you get the benefits of help, benefits of helping someone helping and serving others. If you touch your body, you get the benefits of feel, benefits of feeling his presence and being a light to people. If he touches your mouth, you get the benefits of speaking life into some people, speaking the purpose into some people, speaking hope into some people. If he touches your eyes, you get the benefits of seeing the goodness surround you and the beauty of his father's creation. If he touches your life, you get the benefits of living with Christ inside of you, yeah. growing in relationship with you, yeah. working in your purpose with you, yeah. walking in your destiny with you, and fulfilling what God has created you to be. Hallelujah. Y'all, yeah. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. The benefits of living water is preparing us to know our soul will experience in heaven. Mm. Let me say that again. The benefits of the living water is preparing us to know what our souls will experience in heaven. Y'all, yeah. we don't have to wait to get to heaven for the benefits of Christ to be manifested in our life. That's right. Yet yeah, the living water is propelling us to our eternal destiny. Yes. And every benefit that flows in the living water from Christ to our life is in what you're drinking. I'm done. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Every benefit... Y'all can give God some praise. Every, every benefit that flows in the living water from Christ to our life is in what you're drinking. Shine a light. Bro, I'm glad to see you. Thank you. Uh, I don't know. You got something? You got something? You can help me. Listen, if you hear the, hear the recap, what you're drinking, you can go ahead. Be careful of what you drink. Because it will, if, if you're drinking the wrong thing, it'll remind you of some things you already overcome. Have evidence of what you drink. Live like Jesus is planting some things inside of you. Yeah. Serve like he's planting some things inside of you. Flowing through you to be used for your benefit but for his glory. glory and then there's benefits in what you drink. Because eventually we're going to have eternal life. But while we have having eternal life, we get love, we get joy, we get peace, we get patience, we get wisdom. Because that's a benefit of him walking with us to our destiny, helping us along our purpose, carrying us, healing us when we sit, touching our bodies when we need it. God, just being with us in the midst of the storm, that's the flow of the living water. That's the benefits that we can have on earth. And as you stand, as you ponder, as you stand all across the sanctuary, our ministers are, are, are coming now. They're going to walk down the aisles. We, we want to offer Christ to you this morning. That maybe you are one. Maybe you are one who is not saved by the grace and the blood of Jesus Christ. And you want to be saved by Jesus Christ. If you're that person, we offer Christ to you this morning. That you may be saved. And this day could be your spiritual birthday. And you can unclog the pipes that are blocking the living water from flowing in your heart. Yes. If you're that person, we offer Christ to you this morning. All I'm asking you to do is stand right where you are, slide your hand up, allow one of the ministers to escort you to the front.
But you're not planted in a, in a house of worship anywhere, and you want to be a part of our growth. You want to be a planet right here where you can serve in the kingdom. You want to grow with us. You want to be a part of our growth. You want to serve with us. We're not just a church that's talking about serving. We're actually doing some work. And we know that God has planted gifts in each and every one of you because you still have breath in your body. Maybe you haven't discovered your gift. Maybe somebody told you in another place that your gift wasn't good enough. But I'm here to let you know the devil is a liar. And because you still have life in your body, you have purpose in your body. And God wants to use the gifts that he's planted in you. No gift is for taking for granted. No gift is too small. No gift is better than anybody else's gift because God is going to use you for his glory. And if you want to be a part of our growth, be a part of our family, this is what we are pledged to do. We will accept you for who you are. Red cup and all. Carton and all. Yeah. Lifestyle and all. It doesn't make a difference what you have going on. We will accept you for who you are. But we're going to challenge you to grow with us. Because we believe in the living water, the transformation of the living water that's deposited within you. Make me more. Now, if you're satisfied with where you are, come on, let's sing. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. I Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be I feel your spirit. 